What's up, gang? How are you guys doing today? Um, it's Monday morning. I am currently in Colorado Springs. Um, I know my background looks a little different. Um, I'm staying with this lovely, lovely family who our week was canceled this week, but we were still able to stay with them. And their house is like it's so freaking nice. I'm gonna do um, a tour of it and everything. She gave me a bottle of wine last night. Gave me coffee this morning. The flavors are melting on my tongue. It's so good. Um, but this morning I woke up and I decided to do my morning devotion in the movie room because as weird as it may sound, um, I feel most connected to God in, in a lot of ways when I'm either acting or watching a movie. Um, I feel like that's when I'm, I'm most connected to God, you know, and I, I feel like that's with a lot of different people, you know, when you're doing what you know God called you to do or something related to what God called you to do so when you feel most connected with God you know so um I just decided to come in the in their home theater which is really really nice I'm going to be watching movies in here all week but I was doing my morning devotion in here and there's been a scripture that has been on my mind um for a while it's been on my mind for a while and so I've recently started doing the soap method so that's the scripture where you write down a scripture, observation, um, application, and then prayer. Y'all forgive my 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 throat. I sound a little a little nauseously. But um so anyways, the scripture that I was <clears throat> reading for today um was one where Jacob wrestles with God. And it's Genesis 32, 22 through 32. And I know this is not, you know, my usual my my usual tool, my usual content that I usually post, but I just kind of felt like I wanted to just explain to you guys my thought process and how I was going through my devotion um, with God this morning. So, um, like I said, it's Genesis 32 through 22, Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 through 32. So I'm going to read um, everything and then I'm going to go through my method and um, then we'll be done. It's literally not going to be that long. So, yeah. So that night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. First, let me just say Jacob was getting to the end, girl, 11 sons. Um, 23. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Then the man, uh, Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel and he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. So for some reason, this, this verse has always, ever since I heard it for the first time, it's always sat with me because this man Jacob literally wrestled with God like he like physically like he physically wrestled with God and I feel like a lot of times today I'm not gonna speak for everyone but I know I I wrestle with God a lot um about my attitude y'all I have a terrible attitude um, and I'm just going to be honest when I'm not, you know, in, in, in God's presence, in God's word, my attitude is terrible. I get angry so easily. Um, I wrestle with God about, you know, my career, about what I'm supposed to do, you know, rather than what he told me to do. Wrestling with God is just something that Christians have to have to deal with. You know what I mean? Because it's always a wrestling between faith. I mean, between, you know, your spirit and between your flesh, but what gets me about this verse is that Jacob 
physically wrestled with God. Like physically wrestled with God. Do you know how determined for a blessing you have to be to wrestle? To wrestle with God. So anyways, let me get into it. So the part of the scripture that I actually wrote down was, then the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Let's pause there. I will not let you go until you bless me. How many times, let me, let me, let me not. There are so many times where I've wanted something from God, but I have stopped because it was too hard. God told me to do something, promised me a blessing, but I stopped because it was too hard. I look at my life now and I just, I think often where I would be and where I could be if the first time God told me, I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is, but the first time God told me to do a specific thing and I would have stayed persistent with it, where I would be now. Now I get it. Everything happens for a reason and we have to go through our seasons of growth and all that good stuff. But what if, what if I would have listened the first time? And so I just feel like him saying, I will not let you go until you bless me. That is the level of persistence that I want to have when it comes to my dreams and to my faith. And I feel like that is the level of persistence that we should all have when it comes to God and what God told us to do and where God told us to be and how God told us to move. You know what I mean? Jacob literally told God, I will not let you go until you bless me. I'm going to keep fighting until you bless me. I'm going to keep tussling it out until you bless me. Until you bless me. Like, I'm not going to stop. Like, there's, there's nothing. I don't want anything else but for you to bless me, I will not stop until you bless me. And I feel like that is such a powerful thing to say to God. I will not stop praying until you bless me. I will not stop serving until you bless me. I will not stop giving until you bless me. Like, that's what I hear when I, when I read this, when I read the scripture. Because, yes, he was doing it physically. But today, practically, these are the things that we can do to, to apply this scripture to our lives. And that's, that's what really spoke to me. Like, I will not stop doing what you told me to do until you bless me. I will not stop, you know, being nice to this person or working on my attitude or doing whatever it is until you bless me. Because the crazy thing about it is, if you do something long enough, it becomes a habit. So if I'm giving, 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 giving until you bless me, and one day I look up, I'm not giving for you to bless me. I'm just giving because... You know, I'm giving because it's in me now. I'm giving because it's who I am. I'm serving because it's who I am. You know what I mean? So that was the first part of the verse that really, really stood out to me. And then the second part of the verse that stood out to me, which is the most important part, and I feel like I really, really needed this, um, you know, in the season that I made. Y'all, my arm is hurting in this little bean chair. But anyways, um, wait, where is that? It's when the man said... When the man asked him why he, uh, so the verse is, but he replied, Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. Now y'all might not get it and might not need it the way that I needed it. But let me tell you something. I can get so focused on everything other than what God told me to do. I'm focused on what this actor's doing. I'm focused on what this person, this YouTuber's doing. I'm focused on what this person is saying. I'm focused on gossiping. I'm focused on so many different other things. And I know it's not just me. I know we all get into those seasons where we're supposed to be persistent and consistent and focused on the one thing God told us to do. But we're so focused on everything else that God is like, if you like, why do you need to know all this other stuff? Just focus on what I told you to do and I will bless you. Like, you worried about too much. You're doing too much. You're doing way too much. And I feel like sometimes that's what that's what God is saying to me. I feel like sometimes he's saying, Christina, you're doing too much. You're trying to do this, 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 this. I told you to focus on that. 
I told you to focus on this one task that I told I told you to focus on one thing. What are you doing? You're worried. You're asking me too many questions. Sometimes we, 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 we ask God way too many questions when God gives us a command. Now, I'm not saying it's not, it's not okay to ask God questions. You know, I question God. I, I'm going to just be real. I question God. I ask God, you know, hey, what, what's going on? Sometimes he answers, sometimes he doesn't. But I feel like sometimes we get so caught up on asking God questions that don't even matter. When if we just do what he asks us to do, the answers will come. You know what I mean? But yeah, that was the scripture and those are the two observations. And so, um, you know, like I said, I do the SOAP method. So scripture, observation, and then application. So application for my life, I just said that for me, this means consistently doing things like, you know, where you're consistently and persistently seeking God, um, no matter what it looks like, just persistently seeking God and not just saying that you're persistently seeking God, but actually persistently seeking God. If God, if Jacob can wrestle God personally, I can, I can focus my mind on intentionally spending time and focusing on God and what he wants me to do. And another thing is um, just not having my mind so cluttered with so many different things so that I can hear what God is telling me to do. So I'm not asking so many questions about what's next because God is always speaking. So if I'm not so cluttered with other things, I'll be able to hear what God is saying to me. And then the last thing in the SOAP application is prayer. Um, I'm not going to tell you guys my prayer, what I, you know, prayed for God, but, you know, this verse will speak to you, you know, on your own, on its own, however it does. So, yeah, that was just a little bitty, a little something that God was speaking to me about a little bit. So, I hope that in some way, shape, or form, you are able to get something from this, from that. Um, again, the verse is Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 through 32. And so, I'm going to put on some clothes and go to Target. Because if you know me, you know Target is the move. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I will see you guys in the next video.